On a previous video we went over the distance formula and so on this video we are going to do use that formula to find the distance between each pair of points here, all six of these problems. Alright, we're going to go over the distance formula between two points. How we derived this was on the previous video, how to derive the distance formula. And here it is. For any two points, and I'll call that x1, y1, and x2, y1, the distance between the two points is, you could write it any of these ways. By the way, the one that you usually will see in a book will be this one right here. Okay, that's usually how you'll see it written. But I want to clarify that uh, any of these give you exactly the same answer. The main idea is you set it up with a big square root sign and you've got parentheses with a minus sign in front and squared around the parentheses plus another one. And in one parentheses you have to have the difference of the two x's. The order of the x's doesn't matter. You could have x2 minus x1 or x1 minus x2. Just remember you're subtracting the x values. And the order in the other parentheses has to be the diff I mean the numbers in the other parentheses has to be the two y values. You're taking the difference of the two y values. Order doesn't matter. So any way you want to look at it is fine. I tend to like to put the bigger number before the smaller number, therefore getting a positive number. So let's work some problems. So here's the first problem. Find the distance between negative 3, negative 6 and 4, negative 8. All right, so we want to set it up d equals, make sure you put that radical pretty long, you're going to put a parentheses with a minus sign squared plus another parentheses with a minus sign squared. And now in the first parentheses we want to put in the two x values, in the other parentheses we want to put in the two y values. So go ahead and try this on your own, put the video on pause and then completely simplify it by First you're going to have to simplify in each parentheses, then you're going to have to square that number, then you're going to have to add it, and then if you could simplify the square root, you're going to do that as well. All right, so let's do it. How about if I just put it in the way it, in order, I'm just going to put in the x values in order. So there's the x values are negative 3 and the other one's 4. So I could put the negative 3 first and then the 4. And then over here I've got a negative 6 for the y value and the other y value is negative 8. And if I compute this, I have to simplify inside parentheses first, so I have negative 7 squared plus, in the other parentheses, negative 6 plus 8 will be 2 squared, so that will give me a negative, that'll give me a positive 49 plus 4, so my answer is going to be square root of 53, which cannot be simplified. You can estimate that it's, it's a little bit bigger than 7. Since the square root of 49 is 7, this is going to be bigger than that. All right, now, maybe you plug the numbers in slightly differently. I'm going to show you how I would have done it to get the same answer. I look at the x values and I always put the bigger x value in front of the minus sign. So 4 is bigger than negative 3, so I'm going to put 4 in and then negative 3. And then between negative 6 and negative 8, negative 6 is a bigger number, so I have negative 6 and 8. Now, when you do this, it just means that when you simplify inside the parentheses, you'll end up with a positive number, because a big number minus a smaller number is going to be positive. So that just gives you 7 squared. See how I don't really even need the parentheses at this point since it's positive. And that's going to, oops, I did that wrong. This is supposed to be negative 6 minus negative 8. forgot to put the minus sign. So that's going to be 2 squared. And I'm still going to get 49 plus 4, which is square root of 53. So I hope you got the square root of 53 also. If you're asked to round it to the nearest tenth, etc., you want to get out your calculator and round the answer. You could also plot these points or at least get a, an idea of where these are on the graph. So let's do that. We have negative 3, negative 6, and 4, negative 8. Where approximately is that on 
the coordinate plane. Negative 3, negative 6, maybe it's somewhere down here, right? And 4, negative 8 is somewhere, maybe around here. And then you can just get the picture. Does that look like it's about 7 or so? So what you can do is get a, an idea, you know, like this is negative 3 and this is 4, etc. Um, and see if your picture makes sense. That's all. Okay, let's go on to another problem. All right, here's another problem. See if you could set it up with a big square root symbol, etc. Fill in all the numbers and simplify it as much as possible. All right, hopefully you tried it on your own first. So here we go. The distance is going to be, we'll set up everything. And then we're going to take the two y values, I mean the two x values, and I'm going to put the bigger x value first and the smaller x value second. So I put the x's in the same parentheses. And then I'm going to put the y's in the other parentheses, so that'll be 4 and 3. Plug it all in. I'm going to simplify inside each parentheses. So 0 plus 9 is 9, so that's 9 squared. And 4 minus 3 is 1, so that's 1 squared. So that will give me 81 plus 1, which is the square root of 82. And you cannot simplify that because 81 is 41 times 2. Those are two uh, um, numbers that are not perfect squares, right? Neither of us is a perfect square. So your final answer is squared 81. This will be just a little bit bigger than 9. All right, ready for another problem? Keep in mind, you might not have put the 0 in front of the negative 9. You might have written negative 9 minus 0, or you might have written 3 minus 4. But in the end, you should still get that answer of square root of 82. All right, here's another example. Put the video on pause and try this one. Okay, hopefully you tried it on your own first. So let's set it all up. and just fill in the numbers. We're going to put in the x values in one parentheses. I like to put the bigger number before the smaller number, but you could write negative 4 minus 2 instead. And we're at 5 minus 1 for the y values. So that'll give you 6 squared plus 4 squared, which is 36 plus 16. Now that's squared of 52. That one can be simplified. By the way, if you were going to just be rounding your answer, it would be 7 point something since the square root of 49 is 7 is a little bit bigger than that. But the exact answer, 52 is 4 times 13. So it's the square root of 4 times the square root of 13. That's going to be 2 square roots of 13. That's your final answer. The exact answer would be 2 square roots of 13. So hopefully you're getting the hang of it. Let's do another one. Okay, we have a fraction, and you can do it. Put the video on pause and try it on your own first. All right, so we're going to set it up. In one parentheses, we're going to put the x values. I like to put the bigger number first. And then in the other parentheses, I'm going to put the bigger number first, so that's 6 negative 3 for the y values. Just make sure you always put the x values together and the y values together. Somebody's probably going to write me and say, you can't do that, you can't switch it, but, well, if you and I keep getting the same answer, then I think uh, you can. So just be careful that you always have the x values in the same parentheses with a minus sign between it and squared, and the y values in the same parentheses with a minus sign between them and then squared. Add it up, square root, you will get the right answer. Just keep that in mind. They may always write the formula in a certain way, but there are other ways that also make sense. Okay, so what's this give me? What's 4 and a half minus 1 half? That's 4 squared. See, it's not so bad. And that'll be 6 plus 3, or 9. So we've got the square root of 16 plus 81, and that square root of 97. 
Um, well, 97 is prime, so that's our answer. Just for fun, let's do one more. Okay, find the distance between negative 6, negative 5, and negative 8, negative 8. As always, first try it on your own by putting the video on pause. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to set it up and plug in the y values. And I, as usual, I like to put in the, I'm sorry, the x values first. It really doesn't matter if you get the y values first either, but it's just in one parentheses the x's go and the other parentheses the y's go. So I'm going to deal with the x's first. Bigger value of x I'm going to put in front of the minus sign, smaller after, just so I get a positive number when I simplify inside parentheses. And same thing over here. I'm going to put the negative 5 in front of the negative 8. Those are the two y values. So I'm simplifying inside parentheses. Negative 6 plus 8 is 2. So that's 2 squared. And negative 5 plus 8 is 3. So that's 3 squared. So that's 4 plus 9. Square root of 13. Okay, so hopefully you're getting good at using the distance formula to find the distance between two points in the plane. And I've only been writing the exact value, but you could always get out a calculator, put in the square root of that number, and get an approximate approximation for that distance. And it depends if you're going to approximate to the nearest whole number, the nearest tenth, the nearest hundredth, etc. If you're doing some homework, a good rule of thumb is to follow the directions. Have fun!